All right, all right, Red Nation. Today we're gonna be talking about data truncation in CT, which is effectively what happens when you put something too big inside the CT scanner or it's off center. For some reason or another, you can't get the patient positioned within the scan field of view. This is the kind of artifacts you can expect and how you can avoid it, as well as how algorithms work to try and improve these artifacts. Coming up here at How Radiology Works. Do you remember from our pictorial demonstration of a CT scanner? We have our X-ray source. X-rays then go through the bow tie. There's a collimator coming down in the Z direction in and out of this plane. Then you can see there's a range right here of X-ray illumination and the patient and table need to lie inside of this range in order for there not to be data truncation. If things are lying outside of the region where the x-rays are illuminating, then we're going to be missing that data. So essentially in CT, we're taking the data from all the views. In order to estimate the 3D volume, we use a process called reconstruction. So we're gonna talk in just a minute about the steps of that reconstruction process and how they can be affected if our object is too big. In this scenario, the object actually fits within from all the X-ray views, our object is gonna fit within the X-ray field. So in this scenario, there's no data truncation. This is the good scenario, right? This is what our sinogram looks like. This is what the raw data looks like. Again, see our video on filter back projection if you're not familiar with what the data looks like in CT. And in general, if you look at the data, we're talking in this direction about the detector direction. And then if we look at the detector data for all the views in this direction here, we get something called a sinogram. So in general, the features in the sinogram, if you have one point in the image space, it's gonna trace out a sinusoid in this sinogram space. And in this case, there's no data truncation so all the sinusoids you can see are complete. There's no sinusoids that stop and then essentially we don't have measurements for. So this again is the good case for the data. Again, with the good case, in CT we give things names that make sense, like filtered back projection. We don't try and make up names like they do in MR. But in CT, we go from the data, then we do a filtering. So in that filtering step, we're just performing what we call a high pass filter along the direction of the detector. So you can see in this high pass filter, it essentially is going to make the edges have a bigger contribution. And then we go and we do what we call a back projection operation from all the views. You can see our video on filter back projection for more details, but a high level, those are the steps. This is starting with data, which is not truncated and we have a nice clean image reconstruction. Then what happens if our patient is off center and for some of the views, we actually don't have all the measurements. Or the scenario where we have a really large patient and that patient could be truncated on two sides actually. So in this case, we're missing data measurements on this side and we're missing data measurements on this side. So for this type of a patient, there's actually no way to get this patient in to this scanner and have it be measured from all the x-ray angles. There's oftentimes in the case of radiation therapy planning as well, scenarios where you're going to be actually setting up in the same treatment planning geometry. And in that case, there's sometimes gonna be data truncation where things are going to be lying outside of a 50 centimeter field of view. So what does the data look like in that case? Again, if we look at the sinogram, again, the detector channels this direction and the views in this direction. Now we can see those sinusoids. You can actually see that we're missing some of those sinusoids. So the data actually should be showing a full sinusoid here, but we are actually missing some of the raw data. So because we're missing the data, when we go to do our reconstruction, we're actually going to have errors. There's gonna be inconsistency in our reconstruction. So if we start with the data, which is truncated, that's equivalent actually to having zeros out at the edge of the sinogram. And then when you perform the filter along this direction, again, like we talked about, the edges really get enhanced in a standard filter along that direction. There's an artificially big drop-off in the data 
right at the edges of the data because we're going from actual measured data to zero. Normally that transition is gonna be quite gradual, but in this scenario, there's an artificial high drop off there. And so what happens is the values are quite bright here after that high pass filter along this direction. And so you'll get very bright values at the edge of the image reconstruction area. So essentially you have a couple of problems here. You have number one, missing data in your image volume. And number two, in the area that you are making an image of, you also have very bright pixels. We can't rely on them to be quantitatively accurate because of this effect. So there's a few ways to reduce the truncation effects. Number one is to work on centering the patients well. Make sure both side to side and up and down that the patients are relatively well centered. The vendors have tools to help in this regard, so that's the first thing. But a lot of times, like we talked about, if the patient's too large or if they're in for a treatment planning setup, they might not be possible to get proper centering in order to totally account for that. And then number two, check and make sure there's not other things that are outside the scan field of view that will be contributing to the image, even though they're not intended to be. So this would be like extra things lying around or wires and whatnot. Then number three is extrapolation algorithms. So this is ways to estimate the data that's outside of the actual measurement. So when we talk about extrapolation, it's never gonna be as good as interpolation where we're actually measuring in between our measurements, but extrapolation is trying to estimate data beyond the region for which we have measurements. There's been a lot of improvements over the years in extrapolation algorithms. And again, these are particularly useful for the case of radiation therapy treatment planning, where the image doesn't have to have the same diagnostic quality, but we do wanna have a good representation of the skin line, for instance, as well as the anatomy within for the purposes of radiation therapy treatment planning. So if you look at the case of data truncation, you can see here that like we showed, it's kind of bright on both sides if you just do a standard filtered back projection reconstruction. If you look at the volume rendering, you can see there's also missing anatomy that you wouldn't be able to model in your treatment plan. Then if you look at the Max Field of View 2 algorithm by GE, this is a deep learning algorithm wherein we're actually estimating the missing data using a multi-pass technique and deep learning algorithms. So you can see we're going from this type of reconstruction to this type of reconstruction, where we now have a good estimate of the soft tissue, anatomy, and as well as the skin line. You can see that if you look at the contours here in the volume rendering with some of the earlier techniques which were used to do the extrapolation, a lot of times there would be a choppy skin line that you can see with the new techniques that there's significant improvement in the ability to estimate data outside of the region over which it was acquired. So now you know about data truncation, but make sure to check out our video on filtered back projection to see all the details about how you go from the raw data to the final image. Coming up next.